Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is the third in a playlist on regression. You can see here the other videos planned for this playlist. In addition, there is already a video on the larger topic of sums of squares in general. That video covers how sums of squares are used in ANOVA and other statistical analyses in addition to regression. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status. As usual, in the book and in these videos, We'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are four KTUs. The first key to understanding tells us that the sum of the squared deviations from each value of y to the mean of y is called the sum of squares total, or SST. SST measures all the variation in the variable y around the mean of y. The second KTU states, in linear regression, the sum of squares error, SSE, measures the variation in y which is not explained by a regression line. It is the sum of the squared deviations from each value of y to a regression line. It is a component of SST. The third key says sum of squares regressions, regression, SSR, is that part of SST which is modeled by a regression line. And since SST equals SSR plus SSE, then SSR equals SST minus SSE. R squared, which equals SSR divided by SST, is a measure of the goodness of fit of the regression line. The fourth and final KTU states, the best fit line is the one with the smallest SSE. And here, on one page, are the four keys to understanding how sums of squares are used in regression. You may wish to pause the video at this time to read them all together. Key to understanding number one tells us that the sum of the squared deviations from each value of y to the mean of y is called the sum of squares total or SST. SST measures all the variation in the variable y around the mean of y. Let's start with a very simple example. We have one variable called y. Since there is only one variable, the plot is one dimensional, up and down only. In this simple example, we have a sample of three data values of y. The three data values of y are 6, y equals 6, y equals 2, and y equals 1. And the mean of these data values is 6 plus 2 plus 1, which equals 9, divided by 3, giving us a mean of 3. Now for each of the three points, let's calculate its deviation from the mean. This is shown in the table. For the top data point, 6 minus the mean of 3 equals 3. For the middle point, 2 minus the mean of 3 equals negative 1. And for the bottom point, 1 minus the mean of 3 equals negative 2. If we want a measure for the total variation of all these points from the mean, we cannot just add up these three deviations. That would only give us a 0 every time. That is guaranteed by the definition of mean. But we can eliminate this effect by squaring the individual deviations. The squares of the three deviations are 9, 1, and 4. And the sum of the squared deviations from the mean, as shown in the bottom row of the table, is 9 plus 1 plus 4 equals 14. This is the sum of squares total, SST. It is the total of all the variation of the three points of the mean, from the mean. Next, we are going to partition this total variance, SST, into two components. 
the sum of squares error, SSE, and the sum of squares regression, SSR. The first component, SSE, is the focus of KTU number two. In linear regression, the sum of squares error, SSE, measures the variation in the variable y, which is not explained by a regression line. It is the sum of the square deviations from each value of y to a regression line. SSE is a component of SST. When all we have is a single variable y, then all we have is a one-dimensional y-axis only graph like that shown in the previous slides, and that is the end of the story. But what if we want to show that the variation in y is caused by another variable x? Then we'll need to collect data in xy pairs. For example, x might be years of education and y would be income. Each person in our sample would have a value for x and a value for y. And the regression line would be an attempt to show how the income y is, in, is influenced by the years of education x. The error in sum of squares error is the error in the regression line as a model for explaining the data. SSE is the sum of the square deviations of the data from the regression line, as shown in this formula. SST is the total of all variation in the y variable. It is comprised of SSE and SSR, which is the sum of, sum of squares regression. To illustrate this, let's say that instead of our y-only data values of 1, 2, and 6, we collect data in xy pairs, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 6. In this table, the first two columns showed the pair xy data. If we plot the data, we might take a guess that a line drawn from 0, 0 to 2, 6 might be a good start in trying to fit a line to the data. The equation for that line is y hat equals 3x. y hat is the predicted value for y given our first estimate of a regression line. Using this equation, we can calculate the values of y on the line for x equals 0, 1, and 2. This is the y hat column in the table. Then we calculate the deviations and the square deviations for each xy point as shown in the rightmost column. The squared deviations are also called squared errors. The sum of the squared errors is SSE, and it equals 2 in this example. These two diagrams show our estimated regression line. The three data points are shown as black dots, and the corresponding points on the estimated regression line are shown as small circles. The line goes from the point x equals 0, y equals 0, to the point x equals 2, y equals 6. The left diagram shows the error for y, in, the error in y for each point, and the right diagram shows the squares of these errors. The sum of the squared errors, SSE, is 1 plus 1 plus 0 equals 2. Key to understanding number 3 says, sum of squares regression, SSR, is that part of SST which is modeled by a regression line. And since SST equals SSR plus SSE, we find SSR by subtracting SST minus SSE. He goes on to say that R squared, which equals SSR divided by SST, is a measure of the goodness of fit of the regression line. Previously, we calculated the sum of squares total, SST, and the sum of squares error, SSE. And since SST is comprised of SSE and SSR, we just subtract SSE from SST to get SSR. So SSR equals SST minus SSE. In our example, with an estimated regression line, SST equals 14 and SSE equals 2, so SSR equals 12. More on all this in the Part 2 video. There are several methods for calculating the regression line with the best fit, 
but the most common method is to calculate sums of squares, as we have done above, and then to determine the, the least sum of squares, the lowest SSE. This is also known as the ordinary least sum of squares. And since SSE equals SST minus SSR, the lowest SSE corresponds to the highest SSR. And SSR divided by SST is one measure of goodness of fit called R squared. So the best fit could be the one with the highest value of SSR or the highest value of R squared. However, as we'll see in other regression videos, R squared has its limitations and we'd probably want to use a different measure. More on that in the part two video. Spreadsheets or statistical software can calculate the best fit regression line for you. In our example, the best fit regression line, the best the, the regression model, was described by the equation y equals 0 0.5 plus 2.5x. This gives us the xy points 0 and 0 0.5, 1, 3, and 2, 5.5. Its SSE is 1.5 to make compared to 2 for our estimated line, and its R squared equals SSR divided by SST, which equals 90.6%, compared to 14 divided by 16, which equals 87.5%. We were pretty lucky with our estimated line being such a good fit, but it only had three data points, and we're not going to see that too often in actual practice. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of sums of squares in regression. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd also recommend following my blog at statisticsfromaz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.